Harry and Meghan have chosen to quit the home and family where Harry was born and raised and Meghan appeared to be very happy and keen to marry him too. Now, there are two distinct camps. There's those who support them feeling that they've been unfairly treated and those who are angry and disappointed in the way that one or both of them have disregarded all the reports and comments for them to change how they've been behaving and therefore being perceived by the public. Now, we are all blind to the impression that we have on others because we simply don't see our own facial expressions or mannerisms and body language. So if you've ever heard the sound of your own voice and thought to yourself, that sounds nothing like me, or even seen yourself on video and didn't recognize the person looking back at you, you are hearing and seeing who you are from the other person's perspective. And it can often be very different looking in than it is looking out. So because it is quite difficult to observe ourselves, it's almost impossible to know for sure how we are being perceived by others. So we've got to rely on observations and feedback from other people around us, especially those who know us well or follow our every move. Because self-awareness is not just about finding out who we think we are, it's also about listening to the feedback that tells us how our actions and behaviours are being interpreted by other people. So the arguments and discussions around Harry and Meghan's actions are going to go down in the history books, but unless you are or have been part of the institution that is the British royal family, it is impossible to say whether the benefits and perks are worth the tight constraints. So for ease, let's bring this into our own everyday world. So you have boy meets girl, it brings her home, the family welcome her, they marry, and then to the whole family, it seems as if she doesn't like the way that his family do things. But with every weird and wonderful family tradition, it doesn't actually matter who is right or wrong. Because for me, what matters is that we all have our own ways. But if you step into your spouse's family, you do it their way. And if they step into your family, they should do it your way. And then when you create a family and home together, you decide between yourselves what works best for you both. Now, I'm not saying this is the law, what has to happen, but I am saying that for me, it's just simple manners on what us Brits call etiquette. But the situation that Harry and Meghan are now in isn't discriminated by title, wealth or status of the household, making no family immune to the possibility of their child having to choose between family or spouse. So no matter how much you feel you've welcomed your child's choice in partner into your life and home, many families find themselves with sons and daughters-in-law who not only disagree with their in-laws, but use this conflict to pull the family apart by slowly pulling the son or daughter away until there is little or no contact at all. A situation only made worse by the lack of rights held by grandparents to see their grandchildren. So with Harry and Meghan, we can all see what they are doing, but our individual speculations will differ on why. But disregarding their own personal motives for their self-fulfillment, today I want to look at why their public percep perception should be taken on board as a source of self-awareness rather than both of them dismissing our views and perceptions and seemingly carrying on regardless. So I'm going to explain this using something called the Jahari window, which was created by Joseph Luft and Harry Ingham in 1955. And I'm using this because it's such a simple and well-used psychological model that helps people become so much more self-aware as to who they are in the eyes of others. The model explains that our persona or our self is actually divided up into four flexible quadrants or boxes filled with different bits of information about you. So let me take each quadrant in turn and explain how it works and how it relates to Harry and Meghan. Well, the first quadrant looks at what you and others know about yourself and is called the open area. Now, these tend to be facts and easy to find bits of information and your observable behaviours and characteristics. So for Harry and Meghan, we know that Meghan is 38. She was an actress in Suits. Her first name is actually Rachel and she's a strong feminist. 
Harris, on the other hand, his first name is Henry, he's been on tour to Afghanistan, he lost his mother when he was 12, they're both married and they have a son called Archie, etc, etc. Now, this area is all about honesty and openness and it's up to you how much you put into this box. Because the more trivial and non-invasive information that you're happy and comfortable to share, the more open you are seen to be. Now, for me, this is one of the areas where Harry and Meghan have missed the point because they chose to keep this box in their lives so small and so close to the public that it can look as if they've always got something to hide. And when we feel someone is hiding something from us, it only makes us more curious to find out what it is. So their desire for privacy could have backfired as the press just wanted to be fed something, little bits of information, rather than having to go hunting. The second quadrant is what we call the hidden areas. Now, these are the things that we know about ourselves, but we choose intentionally to keep from others. Now, we've all got secrets, but the reason we keep them to ourselves can, of course, vary, because maybe others could use this information against us. Maybe you kissed the boss at a Christmas party, or it's a time in your life that you've chosen to forget. You lost your license for drink driving. So we do our best to keep this information private and hidden in this secret box. Or maybe in this box we've just got information that we think is private and nobody else's business and we actually don't feel the need to share it. So these could be things like your salary or your number of previous partners. But for Harry and Meghan, this area, or this box that they have, is the one that the media are trying their hardest to delve into. It's the hidden bit of information that would make the next big headline. This is the price of being in the public eye and I don't think anyone would ever envy having the pressure of someone constantly trying to unearth parts of your past that have no relevance to who you are today. And remember, we've all got a past. However, for Harry and Meghan, this has been a crucial area as it also covers the things that we feel, rightly or wrongly, we have got the right to know and should therefore be placed into the open quadrant or the open box. This is information such as, you know, the birth of Archie, who is godparents, why they trademarked Suss's Royal so long ago. And it even may stretch into things about Meghan's unusual relationship with her own family. Now, this area has no issues with things that we don't know that we don't know about them. So for imagine Harry and Meghan are having singing lessons and they want to keep it to themselves. That's absolutely okay. It's private and whilst it stays private, it creates no discussion. But the conflict occurs when we think they have a secret and they're hiding something from us and either wrongly we want to find out or rightly we feel we have the right to know because the danger is that human nature tends to fill in the gaps with information that we don't know the full story to, and this is where the press have a field day. So the third quadrant looks at what we call the blind area, and this is the quadrant that I feel holds the most value, because the blind area is the information and insight that others have about you that you are totally unaware of. Now, these are the details about your character and your behaviour that people discuss about you when you're not there. So, you're really unaware about how you're being perceived by other people. Now, these could be minor traits such as someone who talks too much or never replies to your messages, or the friend that intimidates you and you've really got no idea how to tell them. But the reason that I find this quadrant so valuable is that it holds all the information about you that you don't yet know. Now, I'm not saying this information has to be either true or false, but to other people, perception is reality. So if somebody thinks you constantly interrupt and talk too much, then to them, it's the truth. And the only way to really benefit from this quadrant is to ask for and listen to feedback on how you are being perceived by others. And once you know, you are then able to put this information into that first open quadrant as something that you are both aware of. But putting it into the open quadrant does not necessarily mean it's been resolved. That is personal choice. It simply means that both sides are now aware of that trait. 
But this is now where I question some of the behaviours of Harry and Meghan. Because alongside the more relevant concerns surrounding air travel, etc., there are also the negative areas of the press looking at their trivial mannerisms and behaviours that could have been so easily altered if they'd wanted to work on self-awareness and being perceived in a better light. So that's why I question whether their actions have been intentional or whether these behaviours have been in their blind quadrant. Meghan's belly touching, the arm grabbing, the pushing in front, the Harry's anger, him standing back and appearing to have lack of control, the Instagram posts and disrespectful way they make announcements. Now, we don't know how much of the media coverage they are aware of, because surely, if you realise that these minor behaviours were causing so much controversy, wouldn't somebody who was truly trying to fit in make the effort to adapt that behaviour to gain more public support? The fourth and final quadrant is the unknown area, and this covers the stuff that life just hasn't thrown at you yet. Now, these are things in your life that no matter how much you think you deal with it, you have no idea until it actually happens. So maybe you think you'd know how, what you would do if approached in the street by a mugger, or how you would feel if your partner left you. Because until this happens, you have no idea or comprehension how you would react or respond. So Harry and Meghan are quitting their roles and moving out of the constraints of royal life and into the big wide world. And to them, it must sound really exciting. But how many teenagers leave home for university and return as it's just not what they thought? How many people pack up house and home to set up a new life in a different country only to realise that they just can't stand being away from family and friends that they've known all their lives? Holiday homes are fantastic. Extended vacations are fantastic. The thought of freedom is fantastic. But even those released from the constraints of prison look for ways to return as they just can't hack the lack of structure once on the outside. Now this quadrant can't be filled until after the event. And the only thing we know for sure is that nobody really knows where this is heading. Harry and Meghan have divided the nation. Mexit or Brexit, either one is a topic you just don't want to bring up at a dinner party. And for all the harsh press and media coverage, they really haven't helped themselves. They want privacy, but crave the limelight. They behave in ways that cause unnecessary media attention. Because once the press have photographs of George, Charlotte or Louis, they're left alone until the next milestone in their lives when more images are duly released. So why keep Archie so secretive when he's so far behind William and Kate's three children? The hidden and blind areas of Harry and Meghan's life have been so overwhelming that their self-awareness seems to be non-existent, or at least they appear to place the blame on everyone and everything except themselves and their own actions. Now I do feel that if they had played it differently and listened to the feedback from the public at the start and placed more of this hidden information into the open quadrant, their treatment by the media and the outcome could have been quite different. But they just kept racing ahead, making sure that we could all see this hidden box of secrets, but telling us that we weren't allowed to look inside with that we know something you don't know kind of smile. Now, maybe Megan is used to the ability of talking to the scriptwriters, and if she didn't like how each episode was going to end, she could simply have it rewritten. Well, this is no movie, well, not yet, and the outcome will only be written after the event. So, no matter how much they believe they have the cast and the perfect script, the success of any movie lies with the audience. So, it's always a good idea to keep us on your side. Now, we now have to give them both space and time as this could be their best decision and the start of a most amazing future for the family. Who knows, we might one day see Archie play James Bond in 2050 and his five sisters win American X Factor and go on a world tour beating every Spy Skills record. Who knows? Because the way things are going at the moment, I don't think anything would surprise us at all.
before you go thank you so much for watching i do hope you've enjoyed my video don't forget do click the subscribe button give me a like and let me know your thoughts in the comments box for any subjects or topics you'd like me to go through i will see you next time